Welcome back, fellow value investors. In this video, I'm going to be analyzing Airbnb. If you are not familiar with Airbnb, they are the leader in short-term travel. They, they will line you up with a homeowner in another city that you're traveling to, and you can stay in a private residence. It's my preferred way of traveling. I've been traveling and staying in Airbnbs for 10 plus years. I also owned a few vacation rental properties and rented them on Airbnb for nine plus years, successfully doing so. And um, we we made money on Airbnb. It was very uh, advantageous to use this, this platform as a homeowner and I've been a traveler. And now I'm a stockholder of Airbnb. It's one of my big positions and I wanted to analyze the company. They announced their earnings for the third quarter of 2023. So I have a fresh set of financial statements to take a look at and determine what I think the company's valued and then make a decision whether I should buy, hold, or sell. I'll go through a process that I've created for myself as a value investor. I'd like to share that process with you as well as my analysis. Do me a favor and like my video, subscribe to my channel, and please leave comments on Airbnb. I'd love to hear what you think of Airbnb. Airbnb is the market share leader for short-term rentals and the addressable market for uh, short-term rentals is very, very big. You think about all the vacation homes that people own and I would say 80 to 90% of the time, those vacation homes go unused. A homeowner could put it on Airbnb and start generating some cash flow to help them pay for that vacation rental. And you think about around the world, how many privately owned properties could be put on Airbnb? It's just a very, very big addressable market. The other thing that's exciting about Airbnb is they are expanding into other services like rental cars and experiences. And I think like Uber has expanded into meal delivery, logistics, and so over, so forth, Airbnb can also expand in related services. So Airbnb has a huge addressable market and can uh, cross sell different services that relate to the travel experience. And uh, I think that's really, really advantageous for them. The companies run, I believe, by the best team in the business. So their management team's excellent. They've been growing, they have momentum. So overall, I really like the company. I really like the industry. Airbnb announced their earnings for the third quarter, and it's been about 10 days. I'm a little late in analyzing this company, but uh, revenue looks real good. They grew year over year by 18%. And the company doesn't have massive numbers just yet, like a, a Meta or a Microsoft. So their growth rate is really good. And I think they have far more room to grow. What's important is not only are they a growth company, they are profitable, nice and profitable in the third quarter, generating very good EBITDA. Their EBITDA expanded by 26%. Their cash flow, that's another very positive element of Airbnb is their cash flow is very high. And you think about Airbnb and why their cash is so high. Airbnb, you could say, is one of the largest real estate companies in the world that doesn't own real estate. They rent the real estate. They participate in getting a traveler, a short-term renter connected to a property owner. Therefore, they're like a Hilton Marriott, but they don't own any properties. And therefore, their cash flow generation is very high because they don't have to put a lot of capital. They don't have to improve these properties. They don't have to put a lot of money into the business. They just have to really master and continue to be the best experience that travelers and the best experience that homeowners are going to have. And they're going to continue to grow that cash flow. Looking specifically at revenue, revenue is really expanding nicely. If you look at just the third quarter of 2022, it was 2.8 billion. They're up to 3.4 billion in 23. 
just great growth year to date. You know, it's pretty much consistently. They've had a very good 2023. I think people wanted to travel in 2023 and um, get out and do a nice vacation. I know 2020 uh, was a, a year where we didn't see a lot of travel. It was the COVID year. 2021 was kind of cautious travel. 22, I think people were traveling. And 23, it was a, a very high travel year. I believe the airlines this winter or this holiday season, they expect they're going to have the highest levels of travel all time, all time highs. So all things are kind of clicking for Airbnb with regard to their revenue growth and their profitability. So as part of the third quarter earnings release, Airbnb also issued guidance for the fourth quarter. And the guidance is good. They expect to grow 12 to 14%. And they also ex expect EBITDA to continue to expand. Both are very positive. The holiday season, the winter season, you know, they, they had a record-breaking summer. And it's expected, based on the airline, you know, data that's being released, airlines are expecting this holiday season to be record-breaking. So record-breaking travelers. I think most of them are going to be traveling to visit family. But I would say that um, a lot of those are going to be staying in Airbnb properties. So I'm, I'm optimistic that the fourth quarter is likely going to be a good one and probably on the upper end of Airbnb's guidance. Airbnb's balance sheet is really strong. They basically have more cash than they have debt. Their cash position has been expanding quarter to quarter, year over year. And their debt level is remaining about the same. Very good to see. So the balance sheet's really strong. I use free cash flows as one of the principal metrics to value a company. And Airbnb's free cash flow growth has just been incredible. In 2019, they were actually uh, at a negative free cash flow rate. But in 22, they became very cash rich, generating a lot of cash. And they are just growing very fast. They're growing their free cash flows very fast, which is exciting and should make the company very valuable. Looking specifically at the third quarter in the first nine months of 2023, cash flows from operations expanded about $900 million. And as mentioned earlier, they don't have to put a whole lot of capital into the business. So there's almost capital is almost zero. So most of their cash flow from operations goes straight to free cash flow. And that's the metric that I use in my valuation. I believe that Airbnb is discounted by 42%, meaning that I think that each share is worth $183, but you can buy shares for $129.70. I get there by looking at free cash flows and discounting all those free cash flows to get to a value per share. And I also look at earnings per share, discounting all the earnings per share that I expect, discounting that those numbers to a value in today's dollars. Let's take a look at free cash flow first. So first, I'm going to take the run rate for 2023 as a starting point. I'm expecting they're going to produce about $5 billion of free cash flow for 2023. I'm going to grow those free cash flows by 7% in the first four years. And then terminal value, I'm going to grow at 4% for all cash flows after year four. A discount rate of 8.5%. They have zero debt, really. They have a surplus of almost $9 billion of cash on the balance sheet. So it's a very strong balance sheet, growing business, profitable business. So low discount rate. When I discount all the cash flows I expect in the future by that rate, I get $113 billion of value for those free cash flows. I'm going to add the cash on the balance sheet and take away the debt on the balance sheet to get to an equity value of $122 billion. The market cap of the company is, is lower than the value that I've just created. In fact, I think each share is worth $193 based on cash flows. 
but currently you can buy shares at $129. So looking at cash flows, there's about a 49% discount if you value the company on the free cash flows that they're going to produce. Earnings per share are really good. It's, I'm looking at the next four quarters of earnings per share, and I'm expecting they're going to generate $4.35 a share. I'm going to use a high PE because they're a growth company, and I'm going to use 48. I expect those cash flows to grow at 4%. So it really, based on a discounting of all those earnings per share, I get to a, a share value of $165 per share, but you can buy shares for about $130. So there's about a 27% discount on earnings per share. I blend the two, but I put more weight in the free cash flow method. I go two thirds this number, one third this number to get to a blended value of 42% discount on Airbnb. Looking at where Airbnb is traded over the last year, you can see quite a bit of volatility. And to a value investor like myself, I like volatility. I like when stocks give me an opportunity to buy at low points and, and because I believe in the company. And Airbnb has offered up some really good points to buy the stock here, here, and not too long ago, right here. The stock um, has traded up and down. It's seen a really good increase at the beginning of the year. It fell back down and then it saw a real, real nice run. Uh, like many stocks beginning at the very end of July, we had a real downturn for three months, but now we're experiencing a really nice rally. Looking at uh, the return on the stock in the last month, it's up 11%, which is really nice. Over the year to date, it's up 51.7%. So it's a really good, really good stock for me this year. It's one of my biggest positions, so I'm glad that it's doing well. I think that there's upside in the stock between the current share price and where I think the value is in the stock. I've developed a process to take each company that I invest in through a consistent process and then make a decision to buy, hold, or sell. And first, I want to. it's all about the company. Do I want to be a part owner in this business? Do I like the industry? Do I think the management team is operating the business well? And for Airbnb, the answer is absolutely. Across the board, this is a business I want to be a part owner in. It's a really interesting industry and the management team is excellent. Next is about the balance sheet. The balance sheet tells me, you know, does a company have a lot of problems, especially high debt right now with high interest rates is really a big problem for companies. If you look at, you know, the big telcos like Verizon and AT&T, they have a lot of debt and boy, they become slaves to that debt because they have to make big debt payments. In the case of Airbnb, it's the opposite. They have a surplus of almost $9 billion of cash. So they're actually earning that high interest rate. They have enough cash to grow the business, to acquire other businesses, to fund the business, to help the company continue to grow. And this company is profitable and generating free cash flow. So really great balance sheet, not a lot of problems with the balance sheet. It's actually a big, big uh, plus for the stock. And then the third criteria, I'm a value investor. And by definition, I'm looking for very good companies, but I want a discount. I have to have a discount. I, I'm not going to buy a company, even if I like them, at a premium. And I, I want a discount. So Airbnb does provide a nice discount. So based on the criteria and really all the all the boxes being checked in a positive way, I'm going to keep buying Airbnb stock. I buy on market sell-offs. And the last three weeks have been super fun. Great to see most of my stocks in the green. Doesn't offer up a lot of opportunity to buy, but I got to be patient. Now, I like buying when the market has a lot of fear, the market is selling off, the market hates a particular company, but I love the company. That's good news for me. I buy when nobody else wants to buy. I pick up shares at a low price. And then months later, maybe a year later, I am rewarded when the stock really comes back to 
where I think the valuation ought to be in most cases. That's my analysis on Airbnb. And I hope you found it interesting. Love to hear your comments on Airbnb, what you think of the company. If you think uh, they're going to continue to grow, if you're a, an owner of Airbnb or, or not, I'd love to hear either for or against uh, Airbnb comments. Do me a favor and like my video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks again for watching and good luck investing.